Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the Java series. This episode, I'm going to teach you about Lambda expressions. It's your bitch she want me, yeah. She just want my Javon, she right now, right now. She say I'm a dog, bitch, I bite down. Yeah. I be with my dogs, bitch, we bite down. Okay guys, so now that we actually know how to work with generics, you know, and uh, stuff like that, we're gonna move on for a little bit and learn about lambda expressions and uh, yeah so lambda expressions um, they're actually pretty cool but you have to understand that they're pretty new also introduced in Java 8 so that um, so to get them to work you basically have to go here file project structure and make sure you're using um, a SDK that's at least 8 okay so I'm using 10 so obviously that's pretty recent but also make sure, not just that, but also make sure your project language level is at least 8 also. And as you can see, Lambda is just one of the things that is, uh, 8 is known for, I guess you could say. So anyway, um, so we can go ahead and apply this. Oh, it's already applied. So anyway, um, make sure you do that if you don't have it set. So uh, yeah. So um, a Lambda expression is basically a unnamed method, okay? It comes in this kind of form. So you have the parentheses and then you have this little weird sign. And then on the on the right of that sign, you have the expression, which is going to be uh, the code. Okay, so yeah, so it's a little weird, but it's very similar to you know a um, what's it called a method. Okay, because it basically is a method. Okay, and you'll see that in a second. Okay, so um, yeah. So by the way, this new sign that we're going to be using is called the arrow operator. Okay, and on the right side, that's called the lambda body. So and then on the left side, we're just going to have the lambdas parameters. Okay. And if it doesn't have any parameters, we're just going to leave it blank like this. But anyway, so whenever you're working with lambdas, you want to have, um, or what you want to do is have what's called a functional interface. And this functional interface is going to define a, um, what's it called, a um, method for you. And it's going to be an abstract method so that you can provide implementation for that method. Um, yeah, so if you don't know what abstract methods are, make sure you go back and check it out. Um, it's one of my episodes from uh, maybe like 20 episodes back, I don't know. But it's pretty far back. But anyway, um, so it's a little different from regular abstract methods and stuff like that. So basically, um, whenever we want to use uh, Lambda expressions, we need to have that functional interface. So let's go ahead and create one. So we'll do interface. And we'll just name it functional interface. Just so you understand that's a functional interface. And there we go. And then now we define a method here, okay? And so we're just going to define a method, and we're going to call it int. So it's going to return an int, and then we'll call it get num uh, give number, okay? And of course, we don't give it a body because it's a abstract method, it's an interface, whatever. So uh, yeah, so um, this is called being explicit or implicitly abstract because we're not um, explicitly saying you know abstract int give number, and uh, that we can actually do that, but there's no point. It's redundant because as you can see, it says, uh, let's see here. Um, modifier abstract is redundant for interface methods. Um, reports any blah, blah. Okay, anyway, it doesn't tell us why. But anyway, it's because we're um, using a functional interface in which if it doesn't have the modifiers of default, static, or private, then um, it's going to be assumed that it's going to be abstract, okay? So anyway, so now what we can do to this method here is pr provide its implementation, which is going to be the code of the method okay and so we can do that by making a um, variable reference of the interface so you could do something like this a functional interface and we'll give it a name like an object name interface one okay and then uh, we can actually specify what the code will be for that um, interface um, method okay so we can do that by simply doing uh, interface one Oops, interface one is equal to, and then here's going to be the parameter sign, and we don't have any parameters, so we'll just skip that and leave it blank. And then we have the arrow operator, and then on the right side we have um, an expression like uh, basically some some code. Okay, so if we, for example we leave a number here, that basically is just going to mean that you're going to return this number. Okay, so yeah. So anyway, so this is just an expression that returns the number 123. Okay. And this is perfectly valid because we're um, up here, as you can see, we told it that it's going to be returning an int, okay? So it has to match our lambda expression, okay? So the thing is, whenever you're making a lambda expression for your functional interface method, okay, 
the return types have to match and also the parameter types have to match and we'll get to parameters pretty soon don't worry so yeah so what this is going to do of course is just return 123 so we can actually test this out by doing um, out uh, output and then we can do interface one dot and then we call upon the method name give number okay so that's how we do that so let's go ahead and run this and we get 123 so awesome it works right so um, yeah let's get rid of this by the way we don't actually need this like I said so um, yeah so we just created a variable reference so that's um, the ob so basically what we did is set a piece of code to an object if you think about it that's pretty cool so we can set any piece of code to this object here okay so uh, yeah um, and then we just call upon the method that the object holds which can return give number okay it's just gonna run this piece of code here so anyway, um, for example, also if you want to actually override or um, redo this method, yeah, we can override it basically. We could do interface one is equal to, and then we could just redo the code. So we could say we could say something like 123 times five, okay? So basically, this is just going to return 123 times five, the value of 123 times five, whenever we call upon it. So we can just copy this here, and then let's see what happens. So it should at first print 123 from this line, and then after that it should print something else from this line. Oh, 615, okay, there we go. So as you can see, it works pretty well. Um, so yeah, but also if you don't want to create, if you don't want to override the, the one that you made before, we can always just create a new one, something like this. So we could do uh, functional interface, interface two equals that, okay? So as you can see, we can make multiple object references of our, func our functional interface. So that's pretty cool also. So we can run it and it'll do the same thing. And uh, yeah, so let's, let me show you real quick that, um, remember, remember I told you the return types have to match because up here, as you can see, we're returning an integer, but um, also here we're trying to return an integer. So whenever you make a lambda, it has to match the return type, of course, and the parameter types. But anyway, let's, let me demonstrate that. So let's go ahead and do something like this. We'll redeclare interface two is equal to that, that, and then we'll say booty instead of a number or an integer. So we get an error because it's a bad return type in the lambda expression, it says. A string cannot be converted to an integer. And the re reason this is bad is because this basically, the method code here is supposed to return an integer, right? But, I mean a string, right? This is supposed to return a string, but we're not supposed to do that. Up here it says we can only return an integer, okay? So yeah, that's how that works. The point is we can declare functional interfaces that hold an abstract method and then we can use lambda interfaces to give the implementation of that method or basically just the code for that for that method okay so hopefully you find that pretty cool but um, we're also going to move on to how to use parameters so we can also use parameters basically okay and so let's just delete all of this because we don't really need it and then we'll do something like this we'll just delete this we'll keep the functional interface or the interface and then we'll give it a new um, method here, abstract method, give result. And this time let's give it some parameters, okay? So double give result, double A, and then double, oops, double A and double, double B, okay? So basically this is just gonna be a method that returns a double, but also takes a double and a double as a parameter, okay? Pretty simple stuff here. So let's actually, um, you know, try implementing uh, implementing that with the lambda interface or lambda expression. I mean, so we can do that functional interface. We'll say adding is equal to, um, and then we'll give it the parameters of double a and double b, and then we could say error operator, and then we want to say what to do with that thing. So basically, we're making a implementation of this method that adds the two numbers that we provide and returns the double. So we can just add the two numbers A and B, okay? So you might be wondering, if you're a little confused, why don't we just put numbers in here? Because we already have the parameters defined here, so why are we de redefining it inside the lambda expression? Because we're defining the code of the lambda expression, if you think about it, we're redefining the method itself, okay? So, um, of course, the method uh, parameters do have to match, but basically, just remember, we're redefining the whole code of the method, okay? So we have to use the parameters and define them and then if we want to provide numbers in here to actually get a result, we could do something like this. Um, what's it called? Uh, adding dot give result, and then we could provide the two doubles that it wants us to provide. And then we could do 4.0 and like 5.0 like that. And there we go. So let's try running this and it should work. 
That should print out 9, of course, because we're adding these two things. And yeah, we get 9.0 because it's, it's a double. So anyway, so if you don't understand what I did, is basically we have a functional interface. We have the method, the abstract method of the functional interface, okay? And it's abstract, so we have to uh, basically implement it. And we could do that with a um, lambda expression, okay? So we're creating a um, basically interface reference or variable reference of the... Uh, functional interface object okay so we're naming the object adding because we're going to make a implementation that uses these two values to add okay so yeah we're taking two values that we're adding them and then we're returning the result of the addition okay and there we go so pretty simple stuff guys if you don't understand just pause the video and play around with it and we'll try one more thing so let's make one for subtracting okay so functional interface uh, subtracting is equal to double uh, a and then double B okay and then what is it it's what, uh, what it's going to do is of course just subtract the two things and there we go man I cannot type today so anyway um, also I want to show you something we can actually get rid of these parameter data types here and what it's going to do is now infer the data types from the actual method up here okay so basically, of course, they have to match, but if you don't set them to anything, basically it's just going to know that you mean double, double, because up here it's set to double, double, so you don't really need to repeat yourself down here, okay? But if we do int, then we're going to get an error, okay? Because it's supposed to be double, double, not int, int, okay? So it's either it's either better to leave a blank or to actually declare it uh, explicitly as double, double. But if you don't declare it explicitly, uh, if you don't actually say double, double, it's just going to be inferred okay inferred from the main um, or the method okay so anyway let's actually try running this so subtracting dot give results and let's say um, uh, two and seven okay and by the way this will work we don't actually need to provide a double because of course um, well not of course you might not know this but um, what it's going to do here is basically um, auto box it to a double because an integer is very similar to a double so it's just going to do the work for us and auto box the seven and the two to a double okay pretty simple but of course what you really want to do in actuality is just provide a double just to be on the safe side but anyway um, so we can run this and it should provide a negative five because two minus seven is five and there we go so I mean this is pretty simple guys as you can see it might be a little confusing because the syntax of this is very weird and I admit yeah it is very weird but um, it's pretty simple guys next episode we're going to be learning how to work with um, like blocks of code basically because as you can see right here we have only a single line of code that we can do so we're going to learn next episode how to actually return blocks of code okay so i hope you understand this if you don't understand it um just pause the video play around with this because practice makes permanent not perfect and uh, yeah so if you like this episode leave a like if you want to see more subscribe and also if you want to join our discords in the description make sure you check it out join it hang out with us anything you want to do and uh, yeah so also make sure to check out the code from today's episode it's in the description also. Uh, use it as a reference, bookmark it, whatever you want to do, because sometimes you forget code. Sometimes I forget code. It happens, you know. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. If you like the video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.